won't mean that it isn't what is really knowledge. Yes, it will be. But it will be to see, as it were, the other side. It will be a, a reversal. It will be to see that that knowledge effect is itself an effect of certain relations of power. Now, in the case of the university, the institutional powers are quite subtle. In other words, it's very rare that, especially at a university, and this is more common in high school, where you can simply take unruly students and throw them out into the streets. At the university, you don't get that opportunity quite so often, that thrilling opportunity to just take a student you don't like, say, get the hell out of here, don't come back. But uh, there are other ways, and, and they may seem childish, but sometimes power is childish. There are other ways to discipline. One of my favorite is grading. And it starts very early in our lives. Our first system is highly complex and struct. If you want an account of structuralism, this is an interesting one. Uh, in, in kindergarten, uh, the way we sort of discipline our kids, is they do, they, they do uh, their rows, and it's really red, and they stay in the lines, they get a happy face. If it gets a little out of the lines, they just get a sort of straight face. They really just draw all over the thing in chaotic Nietzschean wildness. They get a sad face, you know. If they don't turn in the work at all, they don't get a face. No face. And I noticed that as you go out throughout, throughout school, that this same top topography of, of discipline continues. In Elite universities, we still go I, and, and, and the fact that we've substituted a letter for that happy face doesn't mean the message is different. In other words, they've been socio, soci, socialization. Power has already instructed them that that I is a happy face. And you get an I, and you see a happy face. I, happy face. B, and guess what you get? C. And if you, for God's sakes, in an elite university, if you flunk somebody, you won't see their face. You may get a letter from their attorney, but you won't see their face. Okay? My point here is that the structural disciplinary way that that's done, believe me, if you're grading in the humanities, the difference between a brilliant paper on Plato and one that's completely insane is not an easy distinction. If you think it is, you just you don't teach that. I mean, I admit that in math courses, you know, there we can let a sort of traditional view hold sway for a moment, but when you're grading a paper on Plato, for God's sakes, or Shakespeare, or Proust, it's hard to know the difference between a brilliant insight and a piece of garbled lunacy. Uh, and this is exactly, to return to my political moment, this is exactly the problem we have when we listen to many of our current official leaders speak. So we don't know whether this is really a piece of powerful political rhetoric or a garbled line from a David Lynch film. You know, sometimes I expect to see one of the currently elected high executive officials just walk around going, in the land I come from, the birds sing a pretty song, and stuff like that. You know, that weird David Lynch dialogue. We don't know. You know, it might even be an act of political genius for at least one person I have in mind here to do something like that. So free him of his image, whatever. In any case, what I'm after here is a topography of very subtle power. Because it looks as though my power to give that grade is my power. But what happens if I decide I'm not going to play that game anymore and I'm going to just give all my students A's that complete the work and otherwise F? I'm not going to do this gradation, this topography anymore. I can't. I've tested that one empirically. They won't let me do it. No, you have to have a spread. Now, here's the interesting thing about power today. They don't tell you what the spread is exactly because micrologically, they're disappointed that you haven't been, as it were, already conditioned to know that. So they're sort of disappointed in you that you didn't realize all along that you needed that spread. Just like if you opened a Macy's that you happen to be the manager of and didn't get that camera installed, your supervisor would go, well, I thought you knew we always use cameras. You know, you were a pretty nice fella, but we always use them. We don't want to interfere with our customers, no. But we always use these cameras. It's for the good of the rest of the customers. Because if there's a lot of shoplifting, the prices will go up. Of course, that'll be an act of God. No human will actually raise them. 
That's economics. No humans do it. They're sort of acts of, they're the only things left that probably are acts of a dying God. Economic acts. But anyway, uh, uh, these forms of power that Nietzsche sets our sights on in the book, The Will to Power, shows, shows power in quite a different light than normal political theory, because these, these are situations within which power and knowledge and principle are intermingled. For example, when I, when I earlier said there was, you know, paradoxically, Nietzsche argues there's an immoral origin to morality, paradoxically, there is uh, rational knowledge itself has its origins in relations of power, which themselves, in my view, cannot be rationally defended. That that is their origin does not mean that what they produce, again, to make this point again so you don't take a simple-minded mistake out of here, that doesn't mean it isn't real knowledge. The universities and, and many other things, research institutes and all, produce real knowledge, what we today call knowledge anyway. I call it information. I'll return to that later. I'm, I don't, I don't want to call it knowledge. I want to call it information. But the conditions under which we produce it are these subtle conditions of power. Grading is, is one example. Grading is just one example. It's one of my favorites, though, because it's one of the times in life when you see what a, a, an incredible effect you can have by making a happy face. You can make someone happy by just... Now, someone's, someone's bound to say, well, of course you do because those grades depend upon what they do later in life and their jobs. Well, that just feeds back into my earlier argument, of course, because the rest of your whole stinking life, you're going to be looking from a happy face from someone, you know, eight years in the law firm and you're looking at all the old lawyers that forgot all the law they ever knew 20 years ago, and you're waiting for one of those S-O-Ws or whatever to give you another happy face. Well, the challenge of Nietzsche, the sort of left Nietzsche that I want to evoke, is to at least be aware of these intercedes of power, to at least be aware of them, and to be willing to challenge their boundaries. Because it is not a pretty life to always be in search of a happy face, and it is not for your own good. For God's sakes, remember, when your father, my father, used to spank me and the first thing he would tell me is the same thing they'd tell me at school. I'm going to do this for your own good. And I always wanted to say, well, damn it, why don't you spank yourself then? Because you can spare me the favor. If it's for good, do it to you. I love you, Dad. And if it's for good, do it to yourself because we want you to have the good. Don't do it for my own good. Don't do me any favors here. Oh, well, we don't think you'll work out w with our firm. It's for your own good. Oh, well, thanks anyway. But I'll sacrifice for you. <laughs> you know, uh, modern power presents itself as what I would like to call, and I, and I mean this especially where it's least obvious. We know what modern power has looked like in the East Bloc and in the Soviet Union, and it was no surprise to anyone they were totalitarian. What I would like for us to recognize is that we are totalitarians as well. It's a horrible, but till we see it, we won't have a chance to be really radically democratic ever. I mean, I mean, okay, a little biblical scholarship here. Easy to find the moat in your brother's eye, difficult to see the one in your own, very difficult. So this account of power reminds us that the totalitarian is not the other. Sometimes we meet the enemy and it's us.